Hey there, thank you so much for joining me today. I am talking about note expression and its benefits over what I believe over CC lanes for MIDI producers. So this is useful if uh, especially you're working with orchestral libraries, which often feature CC1 and CC11 for different kinds of dynamics. Sometimes in certain contact instruments, they don't actually have a CC1 or CC11, so you have to kind of get by with CC7 in order to control volume and create swells. And all of this really comes down to creating more expressive parts, so creating a bit more of the natural sort of vibe of a real human player rather than just sort of MIDI note on, note off limitations. The CC uh, controls can give you expression over the contour of a note so the note can swell things like that so that's what we're talking about but there are really two options for accomplishing this in cubase the first and most traditional way is cc lanes and i'm going to show you kind of what that looks like if you haven't used them before the other is note expression now note expression is really a feature uh, although it is formally part of the vst3 spec as far as i know nobody except steinberg has implemented it um, but it's such a cool feature that it honestly often brings me back to Steinberg Instruments over some of the others that I have. I thought it would be helpful to show how I use it, why I use it, give you five of what I believe to be the most compelling reasons, kind of looking back on my experience. But all of this is in service of a more expressive performance. So if you're kind of seeking that from uh, your, your MIDI music, then this would be useful to you. So let's jump in here to my desktop here, and I'm gonna show you what a version looks like with CC Lane. So this is uh, just a violin part, and I've got a an alternative take here, which is with CC Lanes. So CC Lanes are what you see down here, and um, you can add as many as you want, right? So I've got CC1, 11, 10 for panning, seven for volume, and then velocity, you can always add more right here. And then if you don't see the one that you want here, like let's say you want you know, CC72 for some reason, then you can come on over here and you can say set up available controllers, brings up this window and you can go and you can grab CC72, which I guess is right here, and you could add it to there and then you could access it down in your CC lanes. And really you don't need to access every single um, CC, you really just need the ones that your library support. By far, the most common use for CC lanes is when you're working with orchestral instruments, in which case you're almost always working with CC1, which is dynamics, and CC11, which is expression. Now, this is an example of what CC lanes look like with data drawn. And the problem that I have with CC lanes, and, and uh, actually sort of one of the reasons that I suggest ditching them and favoring note expression is that it clutters up my key editor. So, you know, if I wanted to keep my key editor kind of relatively low profile, I have a lot less real estate down here for my actual MIDI notes because I have to dedicate so much to my CC lanes and even when I have a handful of CC lanes like this open, they're still kind of small. And if I really wanted to, you know, open them up so that I could really see what's going on, really see, for example, the, the curvature in this CC7 line, then it actually becomes even more distracting. Now I have extremely uh, small sort of real estate for my keys. So let's, uh, but but that that's not my first reason for using uh, note expression. So I just wanted to cover what CC lanes are versus note expression. Now you'll see that all of these, these curves in my uh, other version here, so I'm switching between track versions here. So in this track version, I have these colored squiggly lines over the notes, and this is note expression. You'll notice that there's no note expression or there's no CC data down here in these lanes. And so the visual context is one of my favorite things about this. I can see, particularly over the course of, a, say, a MIDI phrase like this, I can actually see how the different kinds of CC are interacting with each other. So here, this uh, sort of, this green here is expression, CC11, and the red is CC1. So I can actually see when CC1 is cresting over CC11, when CC11 is cresting over CC1, and that helps me diagnose problems uh, to refine my expression 
being able to see them overlapped like this, being able to see them superimposed over each other, gives me a lot of physical uh, or sort of visual contact uh, context rather. Now, I really like being able to close all these lanes, so I'm going to go ahead and just close those up. I'm going to say show used controllers, in which case I just get velocity. Um, so now I have a lot more space, right? I have a lot more uh, real estate on my screen for the MIDI notes, and that is a, a huge advantage, one that I mentioned earlier. But also, the second thing that I love about working with note expression is that it tends to encourage me to write CC on phrases. So for example, looking at this MIDI, I would sort of break this into two phrases. I've got phrase one and phrase two. And then with all of those selected, um, if you have these tools enabled up here. If you don't see them, you can right click and make sure that they're checked off in your toolbar. But then when these are selected and I double click on any one of the selected notes, I get this uh, note expression editor, but it covers the whole phrase, right? So if I wanted to rewrite my CC11 uh, expression, for example, then I can just rewrite that like so. So it's very easy for me to do that. Let me actually just got some MIDI notes stuck in the background. So let me see if I can't just mute that for you for us. Okay. So being able to just draw that in, seeing the other arcs, seeing where I'm going above and below, uh, helps me to make creative decisions, helps me to think more uh, responsively and in an integrated way, while also really focusing on phrasing, which is really important to me because now I can write my CC more from the, the perspective of phrase, which in my experience, whether I'm writing in CC lanes or with note expression, the CC data written in phrasing chunks definitely, definitely sounds better in, uh, in the uh, final result. Now, the third thing which I've really already shown you is, I'm sorry, my neighbors are doing a little bit of work. Um, the third thing is that there's less clutter, right? So you don't see all of this uh, junk down here that you were seeing before in the CC lane. So it's less clutter, more real estate for my MIDI notes. It's just a lot more uh, navigable. Now, uh, one more thing that's really cool. If you are using legato patches, if you have nice orchestral libraries, for example, you probably have encountered in the vast majority of orchestral libraries legato, uh, legato transitions for nice legato lines in a violin or a flute or something are typically triggered by MIDI notes overlapping. So you have the end of the MIDI note overlap the beginning of the next MIDI note, and that actually triggers the legato um, transition. It's a way that as a MIDI composer, we can have some control over that. The challenge with this is that if you actually have the note go over and then you were to say cut that MIDI, um, the MIDI can actually get sort of incorrectly cut on an edit. I'll show you what I mean with this. And um, sorry that I hope there's, I hope the neighbor's lawnmower isn't too loud. But let's take a look at what I mean here, uh, because this is kind of an important one. So if I were to go ahead and overlap this MIDI note here, so this one ends after that one, right? And I'm doing that for legato benefits. But then I decided that I was going to come up here and use my cut tool to cut right there in the MIDI. What do I get when I'm done? Well, in this case, I get this kind of thing right here. And that can sometimes work, sometimes not work. It's a little bit unreliable as to how, in my experience, Cubase will actually interpret that little MIDI note uh, that's kind of starting outside the range of the MIDI part. So what I want to do generally is have these quantized so that they snap to the boundaries of my grid, whatever my quantization grid is. But I still, if I do that, then I lose the ability to have my legato, right? So I'm gonna glue these back together, open that up. So what do I do? Well, with note expression, 
I can go ahead and I can control the release and that's this kind of like little nub sticking out of the end here. So if I go ahead, open this up, you'll see in the bottom right hand corner, I can actually change the release of the notes that are selected. You'll see that it's changing that one as well because it's they were both selected. But in this way, I can actually have the MIDI notes quantized. As you can see, the MIDI actual MIDI note ons uh, are all quantized and in my edits, I'll get a nice quantized cut, but in terms of playback, the release of this note has been kind of extended, so it will trigger the legato transition, which is really nice. And then the last thing that I really love about it is just, you know, simply colors. I like colors. This view, if I can actually extend this view a little bit and make it a little bigger, being able to identify what I'm working with in terms of colors, generally I find keeps me in a more um, artistic, more creative mind frame. If I am having to draw in nodes with a pencil tool, um, you know, in the case of my, uh, let's snap back here and look at the other version here with the CC lanes. And if I go to show all used controllers we see all this data down here it's not these are all gray you know I, I can sort of see what's going on here but it's not as visually easy to digest for me as this is here especially when i can get rid of all that clutter of those cc lanes so being able to just look at these and see colors seeing how they move how they're ebbing and flowing relative to each other uh, is just something that i really like and using colors to differentiate that for me uh, sort of as an experience rather than it being a highly intellectual process it's uh, something about colors is for me more creative and i think probably for a lot of composers uh, as well they would agree that working with colors is helpful it's something that's been implemented you know broadly in cubase with say color tr uh, coloring your tracks your folders uh, coloring different parts i know that they use it extensively in machine and ableton um, logic you know because in all of these music creation environments, colors somehow tap in a little better to our creative whimsy, I suppose you could say. So that is it for today. This is just kind of new, but thank you so much. Um, I see a couple of people online with me today. There's, uh, I guess, more people online who have not uh, posted anything in the comments. But as usual, if you're new to the channel, please do like and subscribe. It helps me surface these videos to a larger audience or share them if you know somebody that might benefit from these. If you have questions, post in the comments. If you have suggestions for topics, either post here or also feel free to post in the community area on, uh, on my channel's main page. And I appreciate everybody supporting my channel very much. I will uh, have a weekend, and I hope you have a great weekend, and I will see you next week. Take care. Bye.